This sermon is titled Ways and Works of the Holy Spirit. Be enriched as you listen. Today, I want to just briefly talk to us about the ways and works of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to spend a little time on it and then get into a time of prayer and ministry. And I want you to be expectant uh, as you listen to, uh, to this message. It's not going to be too long. Uh, but as you listen, I want you to be expectant that God will work in your life, in your circumstances, in your situations, whatever our areas of need may be. Trying to understand the ways and the works of the Holy Spirit. You see, when we understand the ways of God, then we can walk with God. We can go with Him. We can journey with Him. So we're not in conflict. We're not going in a different way. But we go with Him. So we are able to walk with God. It's so important to understand the ways of God. And when we understand the works of God, then we know what to expect what God can do and what God will do for us in our lives, in our circumstances and situations. So I just want to open up our understanding a little bit on the ways and works of the Holy Spirit. How does God, the Holy Spirit, work in our lives? I'm very, very important, very simple and yet very important. Just remember that the Holy Spirit is God's. And the Holy Spirit is not one-third God. He is fully God. See, as, long as we think about God the Father, God the Eternal Word, and God the Spirit, and in our minds, somehow we do one-third each, you know. No. God the Holy Spirit is fully God. That means He fully represents the Father and the Son to us. All that the Father is and all that the, the, the Eternal Word, the Son, is, the Holy Spirit ministers to us. He's called the Spirit of the Father. He's also called the Spirit of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit is here to work in our lives, bring all that God is to us. So we need to understand His ways and be open to His works. I want to share with us very briefly three important ways that the Spirit of God works. We must understand this so we can work with Him. The Holy Spirit moves amongst us as the Word of God. Number one, as the Word of God is proclaimed. As the Word is being proclaimed, we can expect the Holy Spirit to move, to touch, to work wonders in our lives. In the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, it says, that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. So you can imagine, here was something that was dark, empty, shapeless, and formless. And the Holy Spirit moved upon this. But yet nothing was happening until, next verse says, and God said, let there be light. So the Holy Spirit was moving, but nothing was happening until the words were spoken. And when words were spoken, all that we read in Genesis chapter 1, all the creation of God and the works of God took place on this expanse that was dark, empty, formless, and shapeless. Think about that. And you can see throughout Scripture, there's a little fly going around here troubling me, must be on the camera, I don't know. Strange. This is India, all right. Okay. <laughs> but hey, you can preach at all times, okay. So, don't look at the fly, <laughs> just listen to the message. <laughs> so, throughout Scripture, we see the power of the Spirit of God being administered as the Word of God was being proclaimed, or as the words of God were being spoken. A great example is in Luke chapter 5 and verse 17, talking about the ministry of Jesus, it says, And as he was teaching, that you know, the, the Pharisees and others gathered together, but it says, As he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Jesus was teaching, the word was being administered, and the power of God, the Holy Spirit, was present 
to bring about the miracle, to bring about the healing. So that's why the pro proclamation, the preaching, and the teaching of the Word of God is so important. Because as the Word is being preached, the Spirit of God is ready to move. And that's the moment for you and me to connect to the Word and say, yes, I receive that Word. That word that's being spoken. Yes, Lord, I receive it. Make it happen in my life. It's for me. I want to see it happen in my life. As that word is being preached. Because the Spirit of God moves upon us. As the word of God is being proclaimed. In Ephesians 6 and verse 17, Paul uses this imagery. He says, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The Holy Spirit uses the, the word as a weapon. So can you imagine? He says, take that word. It's for you. You use it. But what is that? It's the word of God, and it's a weapon which the Holy Spirit uses. So the Holy Spirit works along with that word in your life and mine. And that's why we must understand. And I I'd encourage you to do this. You sit in front of your Bible and say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to speak this word over my own life. And as I speak this word, I'm expecting your presence, your work to take place in me. Because the Holy Spirit moves as the word is being proclaimed. And every time we gather together, whether it's in your life group, in somebody's home, or here on a Sunday, when we gather together to hear the word, you're not here just to endure an ordeal of a 45-minute sermon. No, it's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do something in you. Because He works when the Word is proclaimed. Amen? And we've had so many testimonies. I remember a long time ago, uh, there was this family. That they, they visited the service only once. And this is not an encouragement to come to church only once. <laughs> I'm just telling you what happened. They came only once. They sat at the back. This young man, uh, this no, 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 young man, a middle-aged man, he brought his mother with him, an elderly, his elderly mother, who had a frozen shoulder. They came and sat at the back. Nobody knew they were there. Nobody shook hands. Nobody prayed. They came. They left. But he told me later, much later, he said, we attended the service once. We came, my, his mother had a frozen shoulder. I don't know all the details. This is what he told me. But she was healed in that service. What happened? They just heard the words. They just were in the presence of God. She got healed. I remember another powerful testimony. There was this young man who was on drugs. His life was all messed up. And again, there's not an encouragement to come only once, <laughs> but it, this is what happened. He came, he sat in the service. Nobody knew he was there. Nobody prayed for him. I think he came and went, and he was on his way home to Delhi. But in that service, he got completely delivered. He went home, became part of a good church. He started serving in his church, and his sister sent a message. This is what happened. We came once. His life has changed. He's serving in the church today. The Word of God. The Holy Spirit moves as the Word is proclaimed. Are you listening? So things happen. Right when you're listening to the Word of God, right when you're listening to the Word being preached to you, taught or preached, however, that's the time when the Holy Spirit is active. He's working. You may, not, you may feel Him. You may not feel Him. But the important thing is to connect and receive that word. Say, Lord, that word, I want it to make it happen in my life. God, please make it happen. I need that to happen in my life. And if you will reach out and connect with that word, it will produce in your life and mine. The second way the Holy Spirit works, the Holy Spirit moves amongst us when we worship. When there is music, praise, and worship, given or directed to God, that's an environment or that's a moment when the Holy Spirit is moving or moves amongst us. And this is something we must understand. So again, this 40 minutes of worship or sometimes it becomes 50 minutes, whatever, you know, we are open. It's not 
hard and fast that it should be only 40. But the time of worship, whether before the preaching of the word or after the ministry of the word, remember, it's a very precious moment because the Holy Spirit moves when there is music and when there is worship directed to God. There are many examples in the Bible. Let me point us to this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14, 15, 16, we have the incident of three kings who approached the prophet Elisha. They want to hear a word from God. They want to hear a prophetic word because they're in a very difficult situation. There's a big army that's come against them. Three kings have banded together. They are wondering, you know, when we go to battle, are we going to win? Are we going to lose? So on and so forth. They want to know what is God saying. So they come to the prophet Elisha. Now, we don't know what exactly the situation was. Maybe Elisha would just woke up from the nap. Or maybe he had a heavy lunch. <laughs> he wasn't feeling very spiritual. He was not in the spirit, so to speak. But he knew what to do. He said, bring me a musician. Now, when you study the Old Testament, especially with the time of Samuel the prophet, God raised him up to be a prophet, and Samuel established what we call what the Bible calls and what we call as schools of the prophets. In different cities, there were these groupings of people who were being trained as prophets. And as you study these schools of the prophets, one of the things you always see happening is they move with musicians. Music, singing, musicians were an important part of this, these schools of the prophets. So they, all, they were always accompanied by these. You, you read about that in 1 Samuel 10 and other places. And so Elisha the prophet, who most likely was trained in one of these schools of the prophet, he knew how to tap in to the presence, the anointing. What did he say? Bring me a musician. That means somebody came. We don't know. It could have been a single person. It could have been a few. His worship team. I don't know. They brought their instruments. They started playing. And the Bible says in the next verse, And as the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. So music was played. There was music going up to God. And what happened? The Holy Spirit started moving. Are you listening? So music, worship is so important. Many examples. Think about Saul. There was a time when Saul, King Saul, moved into rebellion. He moved out of his place where he was supposed to be. He was in a place of rebellion, and, and, uh, and things were getting worse, bad in his life, and he was being troubled by evil spirits. And what did the people do? They brought a musician. They brought David. Bring your harp. And we know David must have been just playing to God. And the Bible records that each time David played on his harp, when King Saul was troubled by those evil spirits, he experienced relief. The evil spirits departed. Music, God's presence, deliverance. And so, when we praise, when we worship God, this is an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to move upon your life and mine. And amazing things will happen. I remember not, some time back, there was this beautiful testimony. There was a lady here in our church. and uh, uh, That particular week, they'd gone to the doctor, and uh, they found a lump in her breast. And of course, she was pretty perturbed. But that weekend, there was a worship night happening at our south location. So we have several locations, but we function as one church. And so... The, the, that couple, they normally attend central, but they said, we are going to worship night. We are going to south. We are going to that worship night. Uh, we are going to be there. But they went with expectation. So that worship night, in that service, nobody prayed. They were just worshiping. It's an, about an hour and a half of worship. That lump disappeared. And she sent the testimony. What happened? In that environment of worship, they can touch God. The Holy Spirit touched and healed. Now, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. We are not against doctors or any of that. Thank God for doctors. They will do their part. But what I'm saying is we can expect the Holy Spirit to move when we praise and worship God. Are you listening? We, are, we must understand the ways of God. Because when you know the ways of God, then you know how to step in. You know how to walk with God. And this couple knew what to do. Worship night, we're going there. We're expecting God to heal. Only worship, no preaching, no, nobody's praying. 
But that's the moment when the Spirit of God would move. They went with expectation. They received and they shared their testimony. So, second way that God, the Holy Spirit moves amongst us when we praise, when we worship, and sometimes even just music that is unto the Lord. He will move. He will touch. The last one, third one I want us to understand about the ways of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit moves or responds to our faith. He moves, He responds to our faith. And you can see this in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And when He began His ministry, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me. And we will look at that passage again. So Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. But how did that anointing get into the lives of people? A beautiful example is in Mark chapter 5, Luke 8, Matthew chapter 9, the woman with the issue of blood. There was a crowd of people around Jesus that day. Jairus had come to Jesus with his request saying, please come home. My daughter is at the point of death. And so Jesus and his disciples were making their way to Jairus' house. And in that crowd where there were so many people bumping into Jesus, there was this woman who had an issue of blood 12 years. She spent all her money. But she heard about Jesus and she determined with her faith that if I touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I'll be whole. I touch, I'll be whole. And she made her way through the crowd. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus, the Bible says, he knew that power had gone out of him. So power went out of Jesus. There was a flow of Holy Spirit anointing out of Jesus into this woman. Many others were bumping into Jesus. Nothing happened. But this woman's touch of faith drew that power. And power went out of Jesus and instantly she was healed. And Jesus told her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. So the anointing was there, but faith made the connection. Your faith. Now, I want to encourage us when we talk about faith. You see, when we put a mustard seed in front of a mountain in the natural, and we ask, you know, which is bigger? It's obviously the mountain's bigger. Can this mustard seed move that mountain? No way. So small compared to a huge mountain. How can that mustard seed move the mountain? And yet... When we, with a mustard seed sized faith, connect with God, suddenly the equation changes. The mountain is not facing the mustard seed, the mountain is facing God. And that's why Jesus said, Have faith in God. Our mustard seed sized faith connects us with God and sets up your problem our condition, our challenge to face God, not you. And God will always win. Are you listening? Our mustard seed size faith, that's all he says. Just that little faith, but hook it up to God. Hook it up to the Holy Spirit and set up your problem, your challenge, whatever you're facing. Let that meet God. So the Holy Spirit moves in response to our faith. Smith Wigglesworth, this great apostle of faith, whom God used so powerfully, he said this. He said, God would move over a million people just to reach one person who has faith in Him. In other words, God's got His eyes on you and me when we have that faith in Him. Are you listening? So three simple things. When the word, Holy Spirit moves, when the word is proclaimed, the Holy Spirit moves in the time and there is worship being offered to God and the Holy Spirit moves in response to our faith. Three ways of the Spirit. Let's talk a little bit about the works of the Holy Spirit. The works. What does the Holy Spirit do? Many, many, many things. But I want to bring our attention to a few things this morning. 
We begin with Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1, 2, and 3, and we'll also look at verse 7. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. And this is what Jesus quoted when he began his ministry. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, for God has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. Now, what's good news to the poor? If you go to the poor person and tell him, hey, you got a mansion in heaven. I mean, say, yeah, that sounds great, but right now, I'm hungry. Right now, I need a place to live. Right now, I've got things happening. So what's good news to the poor? Now, many of us have taken that phrase, which, which the Lord Jesus used, of course, in the New Testament, and said, well, good news to the poor is, means they can have eternal salvation. That is true, but that's not complete. Because a poor man is still going to starve. He's still going to want a place to stay. He's got all these other things on his mind. So what's good news to the poor? Good news to the poor takes care of both the temporal and the eternal. Good news to the poor takes care of the here and now and also the future. It takes care of the natural and the spiritual. That's good news. That means here and now, the Holy Spirit can do things in your life for you now. And He can also secure you for your eternity. And yes, it is true that the present seems very insignificant in the light of eternity. But for the, for the person who is poor, the present is also very important. Are you listening? And the Holy Spirit, the anointing, brings good news to the poor. God will take care of your natural and your spiritual. He'll take care of your temporal and your eternal. He'll take care of your here and now, and He will also take care of your eternity. The Holy Spirit will do both. To proclaim good news to the poor. And then He continues in Isaiah 61. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, not only for good news to the poor, but he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted means they are broken on the inside. And maybe there are people here this morning, and maybe people watching online. You're broken on the inside. Maybe it's a relationship you depended on, and the person disappeared. Maybe it's a love that you were counting on. And it vanished. Maybe it's a friend you trusted in and they betrayed you. Whatever it is, it's broken, broke you on the inside. You're in a million pieces on the inside. Outside, everything looks fine. And only you know how broken you are on the inside. You can't even begin to explain to somebody how shattered you are on the inside. But the good news is the Holy Spirit heals those who are broken on the inside. The Holy Spirit. He can put all those pieces together even when you don't know where to start. He heals the broken hearted. Broken on the inside. And so today, maybe you're one of those. Say, I need that. Whatever the cause may be, don't worry about it. Don't magnify the cause. The cause doesn't determine whether the Holy Spirit can heal you or not. The fact is, He heals the broken hearted. Are you listening? He brings liberty to the captives. And He brings freedom to those who are oppressed. So those, you know, we might find ourselves captive, bound in something. Something that enslaves us. Something that dominates us. Something that controls us. But the Holy Spirit brings freedom. The Holy Spirit sets us free from that. He opens the prison doors to set the prisoners free. That's the anointing. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in an instant. And again... We're not against counselors. We're not against counseling or getting help um, from people. All of that is good. It has its place. But the Holy Spirit can do in a moment what sometimes may take months and years to get done in our lives. He can reach deeper than any counselor, any pastor, any 
human person can into the depths of our inner person and heal us from inside out. The Holy Spirit can do that. He can open any prison door, set you free. Maybe you've gone to a hundred places and they said, look, we can't help you. But the Holy Spirit brings freedom to the captives. He opens prison doors. Amen? Those are the works of the Holy Spirit. And it continues in verse 3. He comforts those who moan. He gives beauty for ashes. He gives beauty for ashes. Sometimes the ashes that we find ourselves in are the result of our own doing. We messed up terribly. But listen, the Holy Spirit can beautify those things. He can bring something beautiful in spite of those ashes. He can turn things around. He can beautify it. He gives beauty for ashes. He establishes us as trees of righteousness. If righteousness is foreign to you and me, if holiness is something strange, He will establish us as trees of righteousness. As the planting of the Lord, something God Himself has planted, unshakable, unmovable, He will establish you as the planting of the Lord. That's the work of the Spirit. That's what He does. And look at verse 7. He will give us double honor instead of our shame. Think about that. Uh, have you been or are you in a place of shame? Whatever has happened in life causing you to hold your head down? The Bible says because of the Spirit of God, you can have double honor in that place of shame. He'll give us peace instead of our confusion. And He'll give us joy. The Holy Spirit can do that. Bring peace and joy instead of all the confusion and turmoil that we might be facing emotionally and otherwise. Are you listening? This is what the Holy Spirit can do. Talking about the ministry of Jesus in Acts 10 verse 38, and I'm changing a little bit here. Talking about the anointing flowing through Jesus, Peter said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. What did the anointing do? Healed all who were oppressed of the devil. It healed all who were oppressed of the devil. And sometimes people are oppressed, tormented, but the anointing heals everyone. And God works in unusual ways. You and I can never put God in a box. In Acts chapter 5, something strange happened. The Bible records as Peter was walking down the street, suddenly somebody was lying there. His shadow moving on them healed them. And people suddenly realized Peter's shadow is causing people to be healed. And so they lined people up on the streets. And every morning, Peter walking by, he'd walk like a king. You know, I don't know, I'm just imagining. <laughs> he'd just walk. And people lined up on the streets. The shadow was healing people. Now that happened in a season. But the point is this. The Holy Spirit can do unusual things. It doesn't follow somebody's book of theology. Sorry. He is God. And so He can do unusual things. So we need to open our minds and say, God, work as you wish. Move as you will. Unusual ways. In Acts 19, 11, and 12, it records the incident of the ministry of the Apostle Paul that he prayed over handkerchiefs and aprons. And they took those handkerchiefs and aprons to people who were sick and they were healed and, and demons were, were driven out through that means. And the Holy Spirit do the same thing today, of course. He can work in unusual ways, unusual, doing unusual things. And these are just two examples. We don't have to limit them to these two. God can work however He wishes. Amen? So, we're going to take a few moments to pray. Worship team, please come. And what I want to encourage you, the whole purpose of this sharing with us today is to open our heart. Our God is big. Our God is great. Our God is mighty. I don't know what situation you are in. 
but the Holy Spirit can turn it around. Maybe you came in this morning, you said, Lord, my life is empty. It's dark. It has no shape, no form, nothing. But you heard the word of God today, and the Holy Spirit is here. And the same Holy Spirit who in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, brought everything into being as a word was spoken. Today, in your life, in my life, where there is darkness, where there is emptiness, where, the, where things are without shape and form, and it just seems like, I don't know, nothing makes sense. The Holy Spirit can change everything. And He'll do it in your life and mine. If He will connect with Him this morning. Simple faith. Simple faith. You say, Lord, I believe. I believe that you will do this in my life. If you are like what Isaiah 61 said, you're in a prison. The Holy Spirit will open your prison door. If you're oppressed, put down by something, the Holy Spirit will release you from that oppression, that heavy thing on your life. He will remove that spirit of heaviness and give you a garment of praise. The Bible also says in that passage, it says that it, he came to proclaim, announce the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the year of jubilee, a year of restoration, where what has been lost, what has been taken away, will be fully restored and more. That's the acceptable year of the Lord. A day of vengeance when God himself will judge your oppressors and judge those who have been unjust and unfair. And where injustice has been inflicted, there's the day of vengeance. The Holy Spirit will take care of that. Are you ready? Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. I want us to be expectant. You may feel something wonderful. If you don't feel something, don't worry about it. It's not about feeling. It's about you saying, Holy Spirit, do a work in me. He is God. He is, like we sang a little earlier, He's the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. And let the weight of His glory fall upon you. Let the life of His river flow, touching you. Let the truth of His kingdom be established. What you heard this morning are not the words of man. We heard the Word of God. We read the Bible. We heard the Word of God. And that Word will not go to God empty. He will fulfill it in each of our lives. He will fulfill it. So I want you to connect with simple mustard seed sized faith. That's all it takes. Like that woman with a show of blood, with her little faith, she just connected with God. And that was enough for the power of God to invade her life. And she was never the same. Never the same. As we sing, as we worship, I want you to connect with God. The Holy Spirit moves when we sing, when we worship. The word has been proclaimed. This is for you. This is for you. Let us connect with our faith and say, God, I believe whatever it is that you need the Lord to do in your life, you connect with that. Say, God, do it. Your 
glory for Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known Reveal the glory of the living God Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Come and make your presence known Reveal the glory of the living God And let the weight of your glory cover us Let the light of your river flow Let the truth God for we're just going to pray together those of us in, here in the auditorium those of you watching online I just want you to extend your faith and just reach out to the Holy Spirit Spirit of God we just thank you for your presence thank you that you are here amongst us thank you Spirit of God that you love us you love every person here God you love every person here you are here to glorify Jesus. You are here to glorify Jesus. You are here to do your mighty works. You are here to confirm every word of God that we read and we spoke, Lord. You are here to confirm. And Lord, even now we pray that there will be good news for the poor, for those who are in difficult circumstances, difficult situations. Lord, do a powerful work that will change their life situation. That they will change their circumstance, change their situation. Even people who've been abandoned, abandoned, you feel abandoned by your own parents. And I'm speaking to somebody. You now, if you feel abandoned, abandoned by your own family, you feel hopeless and nowhere to go. The Holy Spirit is at work in your life. The Holy Spirit is your hope. He's your future. He's got good news for you because you are not abandoned. He's there with you. He's got your future. He's got your future. And Lord, we pray right now according to your word for those who might feel captive, held inside prison, held enslaved by things that seem to overpower them, that seem to oppress them. Today, in the name of Jesus, let those prison doors be opened. Let the captives be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every enslaving demonic power, in the name of Jesus, we destroy your chains. We destroy your hold. 
and we declare the captives free in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for doing that. Thank you that even now, the captives are set free because of your presence, because of your power, Spirit of God. Thank you. We bless your name. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, you said in your word, instead of confusion, we will have peace and joy. Instead of shame, we will have double honor. So in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak in the lives of people who may have walked in with confusion. And now in Jesus' name, let peace and joy invade their lives overwhelm them, fill them. I speak in the lives of people who've been put to shame, but today in Jesus' name, you receive double honor by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, by the power of the anointing. The Apostle Paul said that our faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Put your faith in the power of God in what the Holy Spirit can do. Our faith is not in the wisdom of men, but it is in the power of God. It is not whether man can solve your problem. Your problem is solved by the power of God. Put your faith in the power of God. Put your faith in the power of God. Father, right now we pray for people who need healing. Deliverance in their minds, their bodies, healing in their bodies. Just lay your hand on your, your body that you want Jesus to heal. I'm also going to ask Pastor Jacob to take some time to pray and minister once I'm done. Just put your hand on your body. Father, right now, and you may be praying for yourself or you may be praying for somebody at home or a family member, but let's believe God that the anointing will flow bringing healing to you right here to those of you watching online there is no distance in the realm of the spirit the spirit of God is right where you are and even as we pray there could be people at home people family members believe God for the Holy Spirit to touch them and Lord right now in the name of Jesus we stand against sicknesses diseases every oppression of the enemy every infirmity and by the power of the Spirit of God let there be healing. Let there be wholeness. Let there be life. Let there be deliverance. And in Jesus' name, we come against every spirit of infirmity, commanding it to leave. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. Let there be complete healing right now. People are being released, even in their minds. Uh, things that have been oppressing you, tormenting you. You don't even understand what is all this confusion in your mind. And the Lord is releasing you right now from that oppression. It's gone. The torments will stop because the anointing breaks the yoke and removes burdens. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, God. If something happened to you right here, right now, I want you to take the liberty just to come up front. We'll take your testimony. If something happened to you right here, right now, you know, just come on up, come on up to share what happened to you, right? I'm going to let Pastor say, come on, just go ahead and minister as he, as he feels led. Uh, but if something's happened to you right now, just come on up. Don't feel ashamed. Just come on. We're doing this for the glory of God. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. So how, just come on up. Just share what the Lord has done in your life. Okay, just come on up. We'll give you a mic. There's just we'll give you a mic. Feel free to share what God has done for you. Pastor Jay, come on, please feel free. Whatever, whatever the Lord leads, no pressure. Come. I sense that somebody uh, you know, prayed this morning. I know, you know, all of us know the Lord's prayer, but you prayed this morning saying, Sorry, go ahead. Lord, you said, give me today my daily prayer. In that place, give me today my daily prayer. Something to do with finances, something to do with uh, you know, that place of lack, place of need, maybe. Um, I just want to release God's word that 
he is able to do exceedingly yeah. abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So I just want to pray uh, for that person. Uh, maybe you can meet with us after the service. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you can just go ahead and just extend your faith in the Word of God. He says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly. And you're just crying out saying, Lord, we need today my daily bread. Mm. Shall we pray? Father, we, we just pray. We thank you that you know our needs even before we ask of them. Nothing escapes your attention, God. And you're a God who's mindful of us. You're a God who's compassionate. And so this morning, God, Maybe for those of us who have been watching online or somebody here, that God, you heard the cry. Nothing escapes your attention. No sigh, no tear. Nothing escapes your attention. And I just pray that you would intervene, Lord, in this need. Because you are our provider. You are Jehovah, Jireh, provider. Pray, God, that this need will be met according to your riches in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And may the God who sent ravens to feed Elijah send uh, human ravens, send people to bring that supply to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just feel people who have been healed from back problems, just check your back. If you, if you know that, okay, I've been healed, come on up, share your testimony. Please go ahead. Right there. Um, Sister, I don't know your name. Go ahead. Please share what happened. God bless. Anyone else? You have a testimony. Just come on up. Sir, good morning, church. Um, since two days, I was experiencing excruciating chest pain and uh, left shoulder pain. So I was commanding the body to be healed. And uh, uh, at times, these negative thoughts would come. But as a uh, pastor was uh, praying for healing, I suddenly felt that pain left. Uh, both in my chest and in my uh, shoulder. Amen. Just Praise felt. God. Yeah. Praise, Praise God. God. Anyone else? Just come on up. Thank you. Thanks for coming and sharing that. Thank you. It takes a little bit of courage to step forward. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Something happened to you right here, right now. Just come on up and just share. No, no pressure. But we'll just take whatever testimonies we'll take. Okay. Uh, what we do encourage people to do is go back home, check, circumstances change, situations change, send an email. You know, there's no pressure to do it, but we love, love to receive testimony so we can share with other people, share with others what God has done. So send an email to testimony at apcw.org. Whenever, you know, something happens in your life, share it. And we will make sure we keep things anonymous and just share the good things that God has done. Just encourage his faith uh, in the house of God. So we're going to close now. Uh, remember, next Sunday, we're continuing our study on the mind. Take those invites available at the front desk and give it out. Invite people, as many as you can. Get them in. Let them hear the word of God. And you know, God will touch them. God will do something for them. Uh, we're going to close. And if you need personal prayer, our pastoral team will be available, life group leaders, please feel free to come and just be available to pray, to minister to people one-on-one. -on -one. And 12, So we will, we will pray for people on this side, towards my left, and uh, those of you who are going to stay back for the VIP banquet, you may be please seated uh, towards my right on this side, and there'll be a little presentation. That'll start at 12.45, so we have a few minutes um, before we begin. Right Now, before we close, we just want to give an invitation to anyone here. You've never received Jesus into your life. You're watching online. You've never received Jesus into your life. I want to lead you in a simple prayer. The Bible tells us we need to receive Jesus into our lives. He came to his own, but his own didn't receive him. But to as many as who received him, to them he gave them the power to become the children of God. What an awesome thing. And when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, He makes you a child of God. You can't do that with money. You can't do that with religion. You can't do that with philosophy. You can't do that with any other means. You receive the Lord Jesus Christ. 
believe in him for who he is that he died for your sins he was buried he rose up again you believe in the lord jesus christ get him into your life he makes you a new person he makes you a child of god and if you feel prompted to do that this morning i want to lead you in a simple prayer it's not about the prayer but it's about jesus christ let's bow our heads and if you've never done this before a simple word saying jesus come into my life i want to follow you you can pray in your own words or you can follow me and just say lord jesus come into my life forgive my sins make me a child of god and help me follow you and you alone the rest of my life I ask this in jesus name amen if you pray that prayer with me for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you. This is not to embarrass you or make you look strange. We just want to celebrate with you because that is the biggest, greatest decision you've ever made in your life. So if you pray that prayer with me for the very first time, I want to see your hand. Anybody here? You pray this prayer with me for the very first time. Let me see your hand. Anybody here? Anyone? Just wave at me so I can see your hand. Anyone here? Okay. I don't see your hands. I'm assuming all of us here have received Jesus in our lives. And that's great. But if you did pray the prayer and you were uh, you know, shy to raise your hand, our greeters have these bags with them. It's called the New Believers Bag. Please make sure you receive that. So you're on your way out, just tell them, hey, I prayed that prayer, but I was shy to raise my hand. Can you give that back to me? Please take it from them. Fill your name on that card that says decision card. And somebody from the church office will call you, tell you how to use that bag. Let's pray and we'll close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.